Kia ora, tirikutu, hello and welcome back to another episode of Thorncraft 4.2 with Birdtross. Last time we were working here by the arcane work table because we had crafted ourselves a staff core of the primal and two charged void metal wand caps. As you can see I have a second one because of a suggestion in the comments of the last episode. Let's go ahead and gather all of these materials, shall we? So let's try and make the one with the void metal wand caps. As you can see, we have our void aspected silverwood scepter here, but it is still not enough to craft it with all of our discounts. I think I did a bit of calculations and you need about... These numbers that say 60, I think they need to say something like 47, I think is what they need to say from what I worked out. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to get that much discount. We're going to need a discount almost, what is that, like 13 more percent off of that, which is pretty ridiculous. I'm not sure if we'll be able to do that. You guys were giving me some suggestions uh, in the comments as well. A lot of feedback as well, surprisingly. If we come here, I believe you guys were saying that uh, this stuff over here, the Void Thaumaturge robes, also sort of works like this stuff. It's a little bit more advanced, but we'll go ahead and get to that. Uh, not this episode, quite some time into the future. Not right now. We'll be getting to that later, yeah. So, but there was a nice little uh, suggestion to try making a scepter, <laughs> which I thought was pretty interesting. So I did go ahead and make a second Staff Core of the Primal to test this out, and I got these Charged Thormium caps first of all. You can kind of tell that what's where this is going, but... Yeah, so it actually costs exactly the same. If we take this out, the default cost is 288, just like the void uh, caps. But if you take gold, you can actually go ahead and uh, put the gold in, and you'll get yourself a gold banded primal staff with a capacity of 375. Now, the thing about this, I've done a bit of research, by the way. Uh, these things are called stafters. They're sort of a combination between uh, your bog standard. Uh, your bog standard stuff and a scepter, right? So it kind of combines the two words, uh, stuff and scepter, stuff to... They, they work like a stuff in that you can't, you can't put them <laughs> in a workbench like this, and they work like a scepter in that you can't put foci on them, so they're sort of a little bit useless in that regard. <laughs> you can't put them in the table, so even though it would have the capacity necessary to make this thing, and even though it sort of looked a little bit like a scepter, no, that's uh, that that won't work, unfortunately. We also had a suggestion to try putting on some accessories that had uh, discount stuff on them, and yes, yeah, so, and you know this is basically the best stuff that I've got. You know, just one percent. That's that's not cutting it, right? So yes, yeah, you are right. We do have discount stuff for accessories, but it's nowhere near enough to actually uh, be able to make this thing. So we're kind of at a loss, unfortunately. I think what we're going to have to do is make ourselves a primal staff with thormium caps. You can make this one. The default cost is 192, but you can bring it down into a range where you can craft it. So the primal staff, I think the way that this works is that if we just stand away from all sources of vis, is it draining in from this? No, I don't think it is. Yeah, it's generating aspects for us, as you can see. It's basically just generating aspects. What I'm, what I'm been led, what I've been led to believe about the primal staff is that uh, these aspects will charge up to twenty-five. Like it'll charge up the vase uh, all by itself. It just does it. That's sort of that's the functionality of these lesser wand cores right here, and it just combines them all into one uh, spectacular megarific. A wand core right here. Now because it has a capacity of 250, uh, the 10% threshold is 25. So if it's beneath 25, it should go up to 25. That's my understanding. And once it gets to 25, it won't generate any more by itself. Once it falls below, it'll start generating up to 25. So as long as you have less than 25, this thing is just a, it's just a, a source of vice, which is kind of cool. Nice to sort of a, a good thing to take on the road. You can sort of portalize it can have a portable uh, one of these thingies, Arcane Work Table, which is kind of interesting. Uh, you can only make cheap stuff with it, of course, but yeah, that's a good, that's a, definitely a good one to have for the while. Also, just completely skipping over the fact that it looks awesome. <laughs> 
Like those little animated runes on there just kind of glowing in and out. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> the Void, the Thormium Blast Primal Stuff. It's a new thing. So I guess that means we need to go ahead and scan stan it. Wow. Yeah, he definitely, as an all, definitely uh, kind of went out of the way there to make this thing pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and retire Boom Jr. for a while. Well, he's not quite topped up with Vs, is he? Looks like that needs to top up. Oh, that's from when we created the one. Let's just throw you in here and get you topped up. Well, let's get my stuff back on. I had all this gear on for crafting. Anyway, guys, uh, we've got a cool little project today. Oh, wow, speed. <laughs> project to do in the Alchemy Lab today. For the main part of the episode, we have a bunch of the primal aspects down there thanks to our uh, wheat factory. And what we're going to do is make it to where we can have a primal charm factory. Do I have any spare pedestals? Let's just check. Put this in the wand graveyard. Again, we'll probably be getting it... We'll probably be getting it back out pretty soon. I only just need the one there, yay. Yeah, yeah so we'll be making a primal charm factory pretty basic. All we've got to really do is just route the uh, essentia pipes over to a nice convenient spot, and I thought I'd bring you guys along for that. So... Okay, you need to go back in the table. Man, my inventory is a mess when we've only just gotten started. Holy cow. Yeah, so I've got a spear, uh, stuff called a primal, and these void caps. We'll go ahead and keep these just in case we do find a way uh, to reduce the cost in the future. But let's just put this stuff in here. Get the stuff out of my inventory. <laughs> okay, that looks to be pretty good. That's generating juice. Let's see. It only generates one at a time, doesn't it? Yeah, it doesn't generate them all simultaneously. That's... I thought it would generate them all simultaneously, but no, it's only one at a time. Okay, that's important to keep in mind. Hey there, folks. I'm actually at the end of the episode here, chronologically, but I've just remembered, uh, just at the end of recording here, that uh, we were suggested. It was suggested in the comments about this primal focus that I have equipped on the wand here. Uh, it was suggested to try and scan it. Let's get our accessories back on. I take them off because I don't trust the system. Anyway, so if we put these on and get our scanny ready, let's see if we can try and scan this thing. Orb of Primal Energy. We got it. I think we got it. Let's try that again. Have a look. Yeah, so we got it. That's what that is what it is. It's got Aya Peraditio Potentia magic as you'd expect and it was suggested to do that because it would unlock a new research and I'm guessing what that research is is uh this thing <laughs> anyway now uh, there was one other suggestion about this primal thing as well to actually put it in the focal manipulator because there's a cool little ability that it gets at level three let's go ahead and take it off and take it out of the focus pouch I've already put frugal two on there and I don't have enough to put three on there or a third one but yeah it unlocks this ability here called seeker which makes the orbs created by the primal focus seek out the nearest living target and not wander all over the place and makes them a lot more stable which also means they won't do anything unusual beyond exploding so that unusual component intrigues me why would i want to take away the mystery it's kind of nice having it attack living creatures but i want it to still do mysterious stuff you know Anyway, I think I'll go ahead and get that once I have the levels, etc. Uh, to do that, but yeah. So, so this, this is uh, being recorded at the end of the episode. I'm just going to have to chuck it in at some point. Probably right after creating the wand would probably be the best part. Anyway, back to the main part of the episode. We're going to need to make a bunch of Essentia tubes, aren't we? How am I doing for resources? I'm doing okay. Doing okay. And I should have a decent amount of glass as well. Probably going to need about two or three stacks of Essentia tubes got this one right here and maybe we'll need a bunch of this stuff we'll we'll come back and get it if we need it maybe these are, well, we should be okay should be okay let's get out our materials we're gonna need a heap of these wow probably that many is pretty good for those we're gonna need about just a couple of those and okay we can bring a bunch of those and sure we'll go ahead and bring a couple of these too and let's get our glass out it's been a while since we made some Essentia tubes, you and me. Now let's go ahead and just make it use up an entire stack of glass. That seems like a good plan. 
Thank God this is still chugging down here. Yeah, it is. Hopefully we've got enough to actually make some stuff. Make some essentia tubage. Get all those out of the way. Uh, no, that's not going to use them all up, as it's going to be two stacks of iron. <laughs> that might actually... That's probably a heinous... That's actually going to generate eight stacks. Yeah, I only want to... I don't even need that many, to be honest. We probably only need about... You know, this much in here is fairly reasonable. Yeah, that's a bit more of a reasonable number. I was just like, man, I don't want to use up all my iron on this. <laughs> okay, so we've got 16 of those, so let's get some more Quicksilver drops. That's all the Quicksilver drops we need. Throw those on the top. And these guys, let's see, about two of those. Yeah, so it only uses a gold ingot and a piece of Quicksilver, but it uses two iron and gets come on as an ore. <laughs> Oh dear, that's, that's the really expensive part about Essentia Tubes, is just the iron. I mean, the glass is relatively straightforward to get, and it's even easier to get now with Earthquake. Uh, in the past, I've just been using stone shovels and heading out to the desert and just dredging it. And there's just a bunch of materials in here that are just kind of filtered in because I wanted to dump my inventory. <laughs> okay, get these back in here. Keep the inventory as tidy as possible. How's our one doing? Yeah, most of those are up to 25 already. Like, don't you see two go simultaneously? Yeah, two are going. What's going on there? Two are get The Ayer and Ordodo went together. Hmm. Perhaps it's a really low chance or something? I don't know. Alright. But yeah, the kind of my, the, my plan is just sort of keep this on 25, ideally, just because it's then it becomes a really nice working wand. You can just use it for free. Right, so we've got a bunch of tubes right here. I think we'll try and use the Perditio and Ayer that are over here just to save on space a little bit. Yeah, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six right here. Oh, that's right. I stopped the golem from working as well because uh, we were just chugging through wheat and just not using it. I mean, this is pretty much all the wheat that I've got left, and I would like to keep some of it for use later on, and he's right here, by the way. So he, he's not working at the moment. And we might actually be in a position to where we can actually uh, fire these systems back up. It's been a while. It has been a while. Uh, the, the, the reason that this entire thing is stopped is because this guy's in here, so... Sure, let's go ahead and bonk him back down. And we need to reconnect this pipe as well. So, you were right here, right? You should still be good to go. Yep. Okay, that looks to be feeding the systems. Everything's coming back online. The lamps of growth are going crazy. I heard something. Yeah. Looks like the arcane ear triggered. We're low on charcoal. Passed over the threshold. It's good to go again. Anyway, we're kind of focusing a bit too much on that. Hmm, looks like these uh, jars are going to have to go. Hmm, I don't really want to get rid of this aqua because we are actually a bit low on aqua upstairs. The airbow, on the other hand, like drowning an airbow, so I don't mind too much just getting the empty hand and shift clicking. That's how you empty those in a hurry. <laughs> Let's get those back in just to save on the inventory space for the most part. Still got tons of space, but you know, gotta save it. Gotta save it. Right, so. Yeah, it seems like the most convenient place to put this balance shard factory is sort of in the back side of this place. Just. Uh, just because all of the essentials are sort of over here already. So whereabouts is the center? We've got three right here and three right here. So about here-ish is the center. There goes the note block. So let's put that right there. Um, where exactly do I want to put it? We sort of want... This is our main uh, walkway right here. Let's get some blocks to mark this with. Just put that right there. So that is the main walkway and we want to have a decent amount of space just either side sort of about this amount of space is probably a bit too much to be honest but yeah so this isn't the final design for this thing I've said that already so but this one I'm not too sure if I want to redesign it let's get these out I haven't even thought about this at all we're just gonna do in the entire building process on camera uh, see if that's a bad idea or not anyway yeah I think Probably having the Thaumatorium right here is pretty good. So it looks like we're going to need our Nitor down there and this stuff right here. So let's just clear out the area a little bit. 
get this stone away. And let's get our thaumatorium set up down here. I don't think we'll be able to set this up uh, with this wand, actually. What is the cost of that guy? If we come over to the alchemy tab. The cost is 30, 30, 15, so we don't have enough. No, because these are all 25, so that's a bit of a shame. Yeah, and that's, uh, yeah, that basically, that's we're making our pick work for free as well, because the, just the, the beast just generates, which is pretty awesome. Let's get uh, this wand just to do that with. Let's get the thaumatorium supplies. I should have a few spare alchemical constructs, yep. I don't think I have a spare crucible on hand, so we will need to make one of those. So let's do that. Get these guys. Like some upside down pants. Get that, and that is good to go. Need some neat oil. And we've got our alchemical constructs, cool. Um, we might need filters and buffers and stuff, it's possible, but it should actually uh, generate its own suction. Oh man, that's just so cool. Seeing all the items come in. I love it. Anyway, let's get back over here. Let's see, get the knee toward down the bottom is a good start. Hey okay, there. Crucible on top. Well, not that high up. You right there. And let's get these two alchemical constructs up going. No, so you can't do it with that because there's not enough vis in there. But we can do it with that one. Cool. Now, so that that's pretty much the working. Let's see, we're going to need to have uh, six supply tubes uh, to bring the vis over here, right? Now, so what I was thinking is... Yeah, so the problem at the moment is... Okay, we, we might need some filter tubes for what I'm thinking of. Unless I can do something like this. So what's the suction of that? I think the suction of void tube, uh, void things are a little bit bigger. Maybe I want to bring it over my head actually. Probably do something like something like this. Oh dear. <laughs> That's gonna happen. That is gonna happen. But if we do something like this, I am just gonna try and keep these uh, tubes exposed by the way. Uh, kind of make the crazy aesthetic of this place. Okay, a lot of the Yes, the golems do that, they just kind of, they want to do something, so you need to cut ways for them to get back up again for whatever reason they like to come down. I need to cap them in there somehow. Yeah, what I was thinking of doing is having a, a, a basically jars right here for stuff to go in, but I don't think we need to. Mm, not sure. Not sure on that one. Anyway, so... Yeah, we've got the air and oil door right there. Yeah, so we're going to need uh, three coming in on this side and probably three coming in on this side. So we're going to need to come around the back of this as well, by the way, to get access to these other two ports. So let's just cut out a decent amount of space back here. Get this collar out of the way and bring these guys in here. So you'll probably try and bring the air around the back first. That's probably the best bet. So if we just do something like that, it'd be pretty good. Let's see. We want to bring it over the head. Uh, okay, we've got this in the way. Righto. Right. Um, we should be able to do something like that and hook this up like that way. Yeah. Oh, no. That, we do want that like that. Kong Yutio was not liking that. So let's just bring this over here, see how this goes. So it looks like this, uh, I just want to check on this redstone system just to make sure everything's fine. Yeah, it's kind of just uh, activating, deactivating the system as necessary, right? Yeah, he got deactivated by the redstone. So that is all still working. I think... Yeah, I probably want to bring this over... Basically make this go through like this. Is this a good idea? We'll try it out and see what happens. We'll just try it out and see what happens. <laughs> Quote of the day. Quote of the day, I think. Let's bring that over here. And that is right there. So you just need to come along like this. Two more tubes and you're good to go. 
Okay, so that's the eye plugged in. Step one, accomplished. So let's have a look at this suction here. Yeah, so I only want iron going down here, ideally. So, a uh, wind. So, mm, the problem is. The problem is, it's a very long way to pull, so it's, it's going to take a while to do stuff. Yeah, so probably what you would want to have is your. It would take a while, but, you know, that's okay. That's just what I'm thinking, just because it has to pull the SNG from stuff. So. Uh, we'll do the oil do next, actually, because that is uh, the next, you know, the next one that's right there. So <laughs> let's get that on, and we've got to be a bit careful about the Kong Yitio. Okay, that one didn't go crazy on us already. Oh, there we goes. <laughs> Bring that over. I kind of like how it's like this. Just got a tubes just kind of in the air. That really looks awesome. Yeah, this one's probably just going to go right here. To be honest with you. Hmm. And maybe we want to do the Ingy. I think we want to actually make this one the Ingy's just because that's a little bit more convenient, so. Yeah. I'm just trying to do this efficiently, you know? Okay, we can't have that. So let's sort, of sort that out. And let's just kind of bring them. Bring it on home. Right there. Well, that is all hooked up. There we go, that is the tube sorted out. That is the auto plugged in. Now what we need to do is bring over the Engies. Just kind of one step at a time. One step at a time. Whereabouts is the Engies in relation to all this? Yep. Hello. You are right here. So probably need to bring it over about one block here. So right there. And up a bit. That is right. So that's those three plugged in. Okay, that's good. It's all fine. All fine, baby. We're good. Don't you worry. Let's just get a decent amount of space. So this bottom one is hooked into that side. So let's bring this one out that way. Now we probably want to make this one the far-reaching one, which would be Aqua. So, okay. We might need a little bit of space here just to bring that pipe out. Like so. That's one stack of tubes gone. I might have actually had the estimate for tubes about right, to be honest. Oh, this is just open to the air, by the way. I'm not sure if you guys knew that. I think you did. I think I showed that off. Let's get this like that. Very good. And this needs to... Yeah, this is it's this one. <laughs> this needs to come off this way. So, let's dig that out. Probably just do something like this, just to... Save a bit of time. There we go. Oh, X of the stream. Give me those things. It's really nice having the X of the stream. Once you get used to it, it's pretty good. It's hard getting used to it though, that's for sure. That's that one plugged in. We may yet be moving... What's happening to you? You're right there. We may yet be moving this over a little bit, to be honest, but... Mm, it might be in the middle. We'll see. We'll see. Right, you... Need to come over now. Oh, iron cluster. <laughs> Let's bring you. Okay. It would be really nice having an automated, or not, not necessarily automated. It would be really nice having a spot where we can just say, hey, this is where we're making our balance shots, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, the Perditio. Yeah, so that one's going to probably be this one. So let's bring you over. You'll be a really... The problem is that it's just, it's sort of a bit of a grind to have to sort of say, okay, I need balance shards. And even though we have a thaumatorium uh, set up for, you know, just standard use for stuff like that, uh, what I'm saying is, it'll be good to have a dedicated spot. <laughs> and and the Essentia just ready to go as well is another really cool thing. Man, this thing's just a monster. <laughs> but that's uh, two tubes in there like so. Now we just need the PLDTO. This one it should be relatively straightforward. Just bring on the tubes over. How did it do for tubes? Yeah, I think we did about right on the tubage. Just a little bit spare it is all gravy. I think we had about 50 or so to start off, so yeah. Oh dear. That's gonna happen. 
fizzle, 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 fizzle. What did I press? I didn't think I pressed anything. Okay. Right, if all goes to plan, that should actually be everything hooked up. Yeah, that should be good to go. Now all we have to do is bonk a chest in front. Do I have any spare chests lying around? I don't think I do. I've got this chest right here. But yeah, so I think we'll just have to make a chest really quick. Just with our wood supply. There we go. Let's put you on here. Now let's try testing it out. So this one is only going to be... It's not going to be completely automated. It's going to be if we need balanced charts. Like for right now, right now for example, uh, thanks to the exploits last episode, we are quite low on balanced shards. So I've got a bunch of spare crystals right here. Let's go ahead and top up the main supplies and then see uh, what we're missing here. Yeah, so that just uses a lot. So we're low on... We're a bit low on iron order right now. So the one that we have that's most common is earth. So we'll use 31 of those. We'll use all of those, to be honest. Use all of those to make uh, another batch. Which, which will be pretty awesome. That's basically how it works. So the batch number 32, pretty good. How's everybody doing? Good to hear, guys. Good to hear. This is the me area here of the lab. So if we throw these in here and turn this on, let's see, it should start drawing it higher. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I see what's happening. It's trying to suck. The reason that it's fizzing all of these, which actually looks pretty cool, uh, the reason that it's doing that is because uh, each time it fulfills its requirements, it's trying to suck from everywhere. So what we could do to try and stop that fizziness would be probably to put filter tubes on each of these, just to sort of say, hey, that kind of suction can't go this way. But honestly, why would you? It kind of looks cool. It looks industrial. You, you can tell that something is happening. <laughs> and that's the whole point of the alchemy lab. I want this place to be alive. So that's uh, that's going on. <laughs> It looks like it's only made one, so far, like I said, it is going to be a bit slow because the source of Essentia is very far away from the actual formatorium. I was hoping to be able to try and solve that by putting jars right here, but I don't mind that it's slow, honestly. I don't mind that it's a little bit slow. You can basically just say, look, we're going to need a bunch of balance shards, and this is just for general use, so yeah, just throw a bunch of gems in there and walk away. <laughs> That's how that would go. I think that's going to be it for this episode of Thormcraft 4.2 at Birdtross. <laughs> we got the Thormium Bast Primal Staff, and we also got ourselves a semi-automated, just a nice way of getting ourselves some balance shots. So, hope you enjoyed the episode. Thank you very much for watching. Kia kaha, and I'll see you in the next video.